back in 2010, 11, when YouTube was just exploding, that was kind of the first moment that brands started to collaborate. Truly over the past sort of four, five, six months, I have seen this shift of brands reaching out and asking specifically for video content. You have to first and foremost just show up for yourself and for the type of content you want to create through video allow that to evolve and feel comfortable there. And then the brands almost are then knocking at your door to yes. say like, wow, we want a piece of that and we want to be yeah. part of that because we love how you show up for your community. Can you show up for us in the same way? Hey guys, hey, welcome to the Brave On Video podcast. Today we have the amazing Sean Scott. I can't wait for you to get into this interview because we're covering some really good things. You know that my goal with the podcast is to encourage others to be brave on video through the experiences of others that I feel like are really brave on video in these online streets, okay? And I'm really picky about who I choose to be on this podcast because I only want you to get maximum value when you listen to any of the episodes so like i said before today we have sean scott on the docket and sean is the founder and ceo of the partnership expert his consultancy was created to help creator entrepreneurs on the ins and outs of earning through brand deals so we talk all about brands brand deals and how to get started as a creator or a coach or an educator who is looking to secure brand partnerships in the coming years. Sean has also personally coached and managed dozens of creators and supported them on their journeys and he has earned a collective $250,000 plus in brand revenue in 2023. He also has a background as a partnerships leader in many brands that you see in the online space. And in Sean's free time, he loves to dance and he's a killer dancer, <laughs> okay? And he loves to spend his free time in Mexico as well. Okay, Sean goes to Mexico multiple times a year. But without further ado, let's get into this episode so that you can meet Sean. Oh my gosh. Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm so excited to have you on the Brave On Video podcast today. And I want you to tell the people just a little bit about you and how you first started your and journey like, um just like who you are like you know who's sean <laughs> oh i love it yeah well firstly hey Zaylee, thank you so much for having me here and um, i'm so excited to talk a little bit about video partnerships myself uh, but yeah so my journey um i honestly spent such a long time working in tech working in corporate and yes. as you know, that's how we know each other. That's how we met. Uh, that's how we met. Yeah. And it was, I had an incredible time. And uh, I went through a layoff, right? Like that was kind of a yeah. pivotal moment for me. And honestly, that was one of those moments where like I had friends, people that I knew, yourself, like all of these other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that have been just like crushing it for years. And I was like, I think I want a piece of that pie. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, kind of skip forward from there, like um, I decided to take the journey into entrepreneurship and set up my own business at the start of 2023 and the partnership expo was born and yes! I kind of just rolled with it and, and um, yeah, one year later, here I am still doing it and absolutely loving it. Yes. And killing it. So wait, so wait, so let, let's, let's go back a little bit. So you are in corporate and you got laid off right and when that happened what i saw from my lens or perspective was i don't know what decision you made but you said i'm about to get online and let people know who i am um how they can work with me what i'm doing now and you did that through the medium of video which is why i was interested in working with you right uh you were so brave in just jumping you just had this this new like oh my gosh i'm gonna share about who i am and what i do online and you jumped straight into TikTok. you jumped into ig and me as a video coach looking at you and this is this is for anyone that's listening or watching um 
it made me want to work with you, even though I had known you on the other side of things, like behind the scenes of partnerships and working with brands. Um, I wanted to be on your roster because I believed in your vision and what you were doing because you were brave enough to, to share that. Uh, talk to me about what that was like and what made you make that decision of like, I need to get on camera. I need to start creating content. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to put myself out there. And I feel like that's one thing I admire about you. Like that's your thought process. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to get out there. <laughs> so intuitive. So thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I truly, for me, it was a bit of a pivotal moment in that I was sat at home and I was like, okay, I, I need to like, I need to get myself out there and I do need to put my brand online. Um, that is like truly quite a challenging thing to do when I feel like I was starting from square one. You know, I hadn't built the partnership expert. I hadn't built a brand prior to the layoff. And so it was quite literally zero followers on Instagram, zero followers on TikTok. One thing I did kind of know at the time though is like I have spent a lot of time learning how to unapologetically be myself mm. and to put myself out there because if I don't do that things are going to happen opportunities are going to come my way so actually what I did in January of 2023 was I went and upgraded my iPhone that was the first thing I yes. did so <laughs> I was like cool I'm going to get an iPhone 14 Pro because I want a better camera um, mm -hmm. and then I honestly just sat down in my apartment Mm -hmm. turned on the camera and started talking to the camera and talking to the people that I wanted to connect with and yeah. uploaded it to Instagram, uploaded it to TikTok and was like, I'm just going to put it out to the world as it is and think less about quality, less about lighting and sound and more just about how can I put who I am out to the world and see what happens. And again, doing it unapologetically with no shame I think was scary, but like truly such an important thing to do. And and that's the thing, right? Like the beauty of it is the journey of um, mm -hmm. other people looking on, like we love a journey. <laughs> we love like, you know, like, let me see how this turns out or what this person's doing. Let me see what's next. And I think a lot of people think that they have to start like A1, versus the whole journey of it all oh. so i love 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 that you shared that you thought more about like i need to get myself out there versus overthinking uh, you know so it, in partnerships we're in 2024 and mm -hmm. i want to know like in partnerships what is your perspective about people for example i'm a business owner i'm an educator i'm a coach um and a huge chunk of my income for the past few years has been partnerships right uh what are your thoughts about someone who might you know want to dive into partnerships like i want this brand to sponsor um, a segment on my podcast or i want to spread the word about how amazing their product is and how it's changed my life but um i want to work with the brand in order to do that like do you think that there is a correlation between video and partnerships from what you've seen as the partnership expert especially being that you've worked internally and you also have an agency yeah Oh, this is just an incredible question. I would actually probably start it with the fact that like partnerships, influencer collaborations really started with YouTube. So, you know, back in 2010, 11, when YouTube was just exploding, that was kind of the first moment that brands started to collaborate with creators. So it was kind of on in video, um, <laughs> which I think is like we could start it there, but Skipping forward to now, and I guess my perspective working in a brand previously as well, was one of the best ways that a creator could truly represent our message and our brand was through video because it allows them to authentically and organically speak to the message and kind of what the brand is trying to convene. Um, but then from the other side, the agency side and working with creators, like Truly over the past sort of four, five, six months, I have seen the shift of brands reaching out and asking specifically for video content, mm -hmm. whether it be short form on Instagram or TikTok, or whether it be long form on YouTube. There's definitely that that 
big shift that is happening in the industry for brands wanting to collaborate through video. It kind of makes sense. We're entering this era where, you know, video is like the most prominent thing on a lot of these platforms. TikTok is pretty much only video except for those few carousels we see. Instagram reels are kind of the way forward. So I think as a result, brands are seeing it as like the best opportunity to collaborate with the creator is via video. And yeah. so again, I think about that in any like advice or, or something I would say to a creator who wants to enter the brand partnership realm is like, you have to first and foremost, just show up for yourself and for the type of content you want to create through video allow that to evolve and feel comfortable there and then the brand partnerships will come I, yes you, you are honestly the best example of that somebody who <laughs> has always shown up for yourself first and foremost in the community that you serve yeah that is to me what i think is the purpose of what you create and then the brands almost are then knocking at your door to yes. say like, wow we want a piece of that and we want to be yeah. part of that because we love how you show up for your community can you show up for us in the same way? I love that you said that. I love that you said that because I feel like we're also in a time and obviously my thought process this is going to be a bit <laughs> skewed because I've been in this industry for a few years and now it's like bigger than ever. Like, you know, um, and when I say that, I mean, I've been in the online coaching online education space for a long time but that's mm -hmm. only a subset of like e-commerce right and so now we have so much more opportunities than when i first started for creators to make a full-time income from partnerships and sponsorships and showing up online and so now what that has done is it's created a, a want for everyone to be to like want a part of the a piece of the creator pie, which naturally so. Right. Like kids are saying in school now, like, hey, when I grow up, I want to be a YouTuber kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yes. so now we find people starting off. And when they start off on this journey, their sole goal is that monetization first before building community. Uh, so you just shared a little bit about that. Like what, but I still, I, I want to go deeper into that conversation. Like, what would you say to that person who is focused on partnerships first, just starting out, doesn't have an audience? Th like, what's the possibility of that working out? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that question. Okay. So I would first of all say always have our goals and always have our kind of I guess, end point in our mind of where we want yeah. to get to. But sometimes, specifically with brand partnerships, for example, you kind of need to trust the process versus being solely focused on that. So yeah. if you are just starting out and that is your goal is to eventually monetize via brand partnerships, it is almost super important to build your own brand, your mm. own kind of organic voice and, and kind of opinions within your niche before you get into that um and truly i think like my experience of working with different creators over the past year those who do want to trust the process of building their own brand first and foremost they seem to be more successful with the eventual revenue that they make from brand partnerships however that being said <laughs> i also would love to talk about this idea of ugc which is yes. user generated content yes um for anybody who kind of doesn't know, user-generated content is this weird fancy way to basically just say content that you create for a brand. Right. Um, it has been a around for such a long time in a various format. It just finally yes. has a name and, it, and, and creators are monetizing. But again, if you're kind of starting out and you're thinking, I really want to monetize five brand partnerships, but I don't have the audience. This is this incredible way to do it. Like if you truly, again, going back to it, can show up on camera, authentically convey a message, um, you can produce this content for brands to use, this video content for them to use, and you can earn while you're doing it. So there is a possibility, regardless of where you are in the journey, exactly. but the authenticity kind of trumps everything for me. 
Yes. Oh, okay. So I love that. That is, it's such a perfect answer because there is the possibility. It is there. Uh, but, you know, like everything else, it's still really important to build your own. I feel like we've been doing UGC, quote unquote, for years. Uh, like you said, it just has a name now. But I don't, do you feel like, like the type of UGC that's done right now, do you feel like it's a trend in any way? Or do you feel like it's going to be around for a long time? I think it will be around for a long time, but it will definitely evolve again. Um, you know, taking myself back to my brand hat and working within a brand. Um, a lot of the times brands will jump on whatever the trend is within marketing, whatever, whatever is going to basically get them to monetization themselves. So currently, UGC is such a fantastic tactic because it allows a brand to basically say, I want to sell to that target audience. So I will bring that audience in to produce video content for my social media because it will appeal to that audience. Like it's right. kind of a no brainer. Um, so I think definitely for the next year, um, you know, the bigger brands have done it. The smaller brands will jump on the bandwagon. And then it will just evolve into what the whatever content we have in 2025 and beyond. Yeah. Um, but I don't think, I think that idea of working with your target audience to create content will be around for a long time. It will just evolve. I agree. I agree because, well, first of all, things are ever changing and ever evolving. Um, but who know? And, and who knows like what's next specifically? Uh, I think UGC also helped all of the new businesses get immediate testimonials versus waiting for their clients and customers to get testimonials. So it did create uh, streams of income for people that probably didn't have like you know, uh, a base of people that they could tap into to say, hey, how was your experience out the gate? You know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and it seems like when companies use, again, authentic UGC, that feels like it will perform a lot better. Like I have a good friend who she runs one of those programs within a brand still. Um, and she, you know, we were having coffee and she was basically telling me that the best performing UGC were the actual clients that loved the product and could show up on camera and create like a very real testimonial that that people could tell wasn't fake. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so so <laughs> so <laughs> so so this is what I I really think is always going. I think authenticity is always going to be key, no matter what. Like I do love the the ability to hire someone or pay someone, you know, like $3,000 to say your product is amazing. Um, but I think there's a difference, like you said, working with people that truly believe in the product versus, let's say, hiring an actor or a paid actor. I've seen companies hire like paid actors yeah, and it worked. Yeah. But I think that there's a difference between that actor really understanding your target audience or understanding themselves as a genuine user of what you're sharing versus you know working with someone who really cares about it oh yeah wow. you've got that a hundred percent like we are so exposed to video content by tiktok all day and every day we can tell yeah. when something is genuine and when it is not and so if mm -hmm. folks are able to show up and be genuine that is just going to shine through beyond everything else that's so true <sighs> It's just so much like I'm thinking about so many things like, wait, but now we have TikTok shop with people making money uh, with affiliate content, uh, basically, because with TikTok shop, you get paid um, a percentage of whatever it is you sell. And it's pretty easy to go viral. And now TikTok is becoming, uh, you know, it's it's like Amazon, literally. And I just read that meta is going to partner up with amazon in the same way that uh you know there's tiktok shop specifically so there's the world is constantly evolving now what i love is that there's so many ways to make money and you can choose your your way specifically but what i'm even more interested in is seeing creators like you said give a genuine review on something and then you're able to still grow your following based on if people liked your personality while sharing that content. And then you can garner a community, grow a community, and then still do partnerships, right? Oh, yes. Oh, a thousand percent. Exactly <laughs> that. What you just said of, of 
you know, if you are still growing your own brand and showcasing your own opinions and things you love, exactly. but then do the brand partnerships alongside it. Absolutely incredible. Let's do that. I, exa- I mean, there's so many ways. Um, Sean, what do you see for partnerships in 2024 and in 2025? Ooh, yes. Okay, so I see it has shifted drastically for sure over the past couple of years. I think we are in an era where there are so many people that can show up online and be a creator, which I think is incredible because it gives us all opportunity. But as a result, it means that there is almost this over demand as well. Um, And so it's actually pretty hard to land brand partnerships the way that we did in the past. But I think as a result, the way to stand out amongst that and still get brand partnerships that are aligned with your vision and your brand is to have that opinion, that niche, that way to show up that like when you do get in front of a brand, they can look at you and think like, why would I not want to work with this creator? Like they, the way that they show up is so unique that I would be, it's a no brainer to partner with them. So Mm. I think with this changing landscape, if people are able to show up more so online with their own opinion and niche, they will allow those brand partnerships. So I think that's that's going to shift. Um, again, we've mentioned it, but video is like, it's a non-negotiable now. I think if somebody wants to break into brand partnerships and earn it as a sustainable revenue stream, they have to be able to produce video content quickly um, to message and authentically in order to earn from these deals. Um, And then ultimately outside of that, I think there's still such an exciting opportunity to try different things and be creative as well with brand partnerships. Like I think brands are getting a little bit more like, hey, I want to do, I don't know, like TikTok strategy with a creator. I want to pay them to come in and give me a TikTok strategy because they've done it themselves. So I think it's also going to evolve in that way that it will become creative and exciting. Yeah, yeah, there was a huge potential. I love that. I love that because I feel like even in my own journey, uh, the way that I worked with brands wasn't initially the way that I thought I would be working with brands. So more on like, you know, like educator partnerships, like come in and teach their audience or, um, you know, create specifically like a series for their audience. Like there's so many uh, different ways to partner with brands. And I think that, as long as brands allow us as creators to be truly flexible and creative and flex our creative muscles, <laughs> you know, there could be so much magic that could be uh, created, kind of like thinking color, uh, you know, doing that partnership was very organic and I could have brought in my ideas and shared, well, this is what's working. This is what I would like to see kind of thing. Like, you know, it's just you're able to do so many different things when you can flex that creative muscle (laughs) yes Um, i agree i would definitely add to that as well i think from my perspective of working with you like it does stand out how flexible and creative you can be with these partnerships like i truly appreciate that you will approach it all with this vision and this kind of almost like analytical lens as well it's like what can i do that will make this different or make this stand out and then to me that is what has made everything a success in terms of the partnerships you deliver is that flexibility, that creativity and that like ability to do something different. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be really honest. This is something that I've never shared, but it's something I want to amplify this year and moving forward, even with my students and the way that I teach them. Um, I like a lot of partnerships that happen for me. I take my unique circumstance or story and share with the brand. So even for Thinking Color, I came to Thinkific and said, hey, guys, like I don't see anyone like myself. I don't see it in the marketing. I don't see it anywhere. And I know for sure there are so many other women of color like me who are creating online courses, coaching, educating, doing all of those things. And so that's how that partnership kind of blossomed and bloomed. But it was me bringing my um, experience and expertise. And whatever event Thinkific was having, I would fly on my own dollar to whatever city. I I went to LA. I hosted one myself, a meetup myself in New York. Like I would literally like put myself in position. I think I I even... um, 
I went to San Diego, like wherever they were. I was like, I'm going to be there until they started asking me, hey, we're doing X, Y, Z. Can you come? And that ended up like a booth hosting kind of thing. But it was all relationship building. But in that, um, it was my story and experience, you know. And so I think that allows for us to create authentically, uh, you know, and from a whole different lens or perspective for a brand when they're not necessarily thinking about that and their brands aren't reflecting your experiences. Do you feel like that's a a great way for creators to create partnerships as well? Oh, 100% yes. Almost exactly what you have just described is probably the best approach to brand partnerships is essentially what you just, what I took from that is you grew a relationship with Thinkific yes. to create thinking color. So you kind of thought about it more, less of a transaction and more of a relationship with a business partner, essentially. And yes. so again, the success often comes through um, growing that relationship with a brand and not being afraid to connect with people within the company, to shout them out on social media, to show up to opportunities and, and kind of energetically give into that relationship because it will come back to you you know a lot of these things don't happen overnight and so you you creating thinking color with thinkific wasn't an overnight thing um it is something that you put a lot of energy and time into um so yes i think you know that's that is if you want to get into brand partnerships don't be afraid to put yourself out there to grow with a brand and then the opportunities will come to you. They will. Like you are an example of that. Yeah, because it, it was years. Like, oh my gosh. It's it's kind of crazy to even look back and think about that partnership and think about like the friends I've come away with from that partnership you included. Um, and how even when you left Thinkific, we were able to work together. And I, I also want to like kind of go into... Um, So Sean was my partnership manager for a year and we did some incredible things together. And I'm like, now I want to dive into like just sharing like the perspective because that is a good um, uh, way to do things. But it's all like for me, I'm sure for Sean working with me, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't think Daly's going to want to do that because it also made me very picky about like, what partnerships I wanted to do and what partnerships I didn't want to do um, just because of my integrity and honesty. So mm-hmm. I know there are times where you were probably like, gosh, just do it, Zaley, just do it. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, Sean, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't want to because I'm not, you know, natively connected to whatever this thing is or yeah. like, what is your thoughts about that, about a creator or, or have you seen that like across the board with the creators you work with or, you know, cause everyone is different, you know, um, what yeah. is your thought there? Yeah, definitely. So it, that's kind of interesting because I think there is two sides to it. There are definitely yeah. folks who just want to monetize and will take truly any deal, which I think is okay. Like, yeah, I think both ways are, you know, we are collaborating, we are, you're still delivering and you're essentially delivering a service. Totally. Okay. But the flip side is pretty much, pretty much everybody that I do actually end up working with, um, is the other side where they are so values driven and they really have to believe in a brand, the product, the service, the vision in order to promote it. Um, and I actually think that's a great thing because then they're okay with saying no to certain opportunities, yeah. knowing that ultimately their audience community won't or be served by whatever the product or service yeah. is. So um, I think it's okay to be either side of it, like get the bank, burn the deals, yeah. or on the other side, if you just if you're doing it for values and vision and your community, fantastic as well. Like and anything in between. <laughs> and yeah. as well, I would say like. I worked with you as a partner manager and I absolutely love it. And it's such an incredible experience, but not everybody needs a partner manager. Like it is truly, I think the benefit of a partner manager is if somebody is a visionary and a creative and they're like, wow, I really don't want to do a contract partner manager. Fantastic. They can come in, they can negotiate contract, figure out logistics. Um, But if a creator can, you know, handle that themselves and be confident in it, 
they can 100% take on this process themselves. No problem. Manage it, negotiate, yeah. deliver it. I, I want to talk about that a little more. I'm so glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, like for me, for example, last year, um, I had, a, well, for the past few years, I've had so many different aspects of my business going on that there were things that I could not pay attention to at all. So there was a time where I was okay, like, I'm okay with handling partnerships myself. And then I got so busy between my membership, my own online courses, then doing consulting. Oh my gosh. Like I was like, I love doing partnerships. I want to continue to do them with brands that I love, but I just don't want to handle the logistics. And so that's where I was like, Sean, can you help me? Because I don't want to do this anymore. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, that's a bit of like what you were speaking about to where some creators are fine doing it. I had my season of doing it. Um, and I had my season of like, Hey Sean, can you just handle this for me? Because I am, <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, yeah. but I do want to share also. So uh, of course it depends on your capacity, but another reason why I also worked with Sean as a partnership manager is there was a time where I was doubting my rates and I wanted to tap into someone who is seeing things that I'm not seeing. You're in rooms with bigger creators, smaller creators, other creators. So you have a good gauge of like, you know, what things cost. If I'm underpricing myself, maybe another line item that we can add that I wasn't thinking about. Like, can you share a little bit about that? Because I think that's another reason why someone should have a manager. Yes, absolutely. I, so 100%, truly one of the core values of the partnership expert for me is I call it equitable partnerships because I want the creator to be completely and fairly compensated for the work that they do. And on the flip side, I also want the brand to feel like they haven't been taken advantage of because I think it's kind of a tough industry in that there isn't as much transparency as we have in like traditional corporate, like corporate world, for example, where you can pretty much go online and you can figure out, hey, I want this type of job. I'm probably going to get paid this much hourly. That transparency doesn't exist within the creator realm. So what I love to do is ensure that when I work with a creator, we can look at every single channel, everything they do, and I'm pretty data focused there and figure out like, hey, does this align with where they should, you know, be charging? Uh, and will it be fair for them and ensure that they get compensated? But even beyond the monetary value, um, to me, it's about ensuring you don't get taken advantage of as well. Mm. Like I... <laughs> getting real for a second when I worked in some brands I've seen some shady agreements get pushed out to creators where essentially they're getting taken advantage of and the creator is just like sure I'll sign that because they don't know what they're signing I agree. so like for me for example I want to come in every creator that I represent look through that contract and literally call out those shady terms that is like actually if you want that the creator should be paid for that or we're not going to agree with that term because point blank, it isn't fair. <laughs> so I think for me, that is why I do what I do is to ensure creators A, are paid fairly, but B, are just not taken advantage of by brands. I, I will say that's one of the biggest things that I learned from you, especially as it pertains to contracts and, and legalities and reading those contracts. It's kind of like an artist. You will sign away your whole life. Like that company can use you forever and ever and ever <laughs> on their website. And you have not like you you don't know. You're just excited for the opportunity to be you know, in on their website or in a video or and so I learned from you to really properly like read that contract, like go through it and and talk, uh, speak up for yourself and say, oh, yeah. hey, this isn't fair. I don't want to do this. Like, you know, this is my int intellectual property, uh, you know, things like that. And, and I think that that is another perk of working with someone like you, especially I would say. So one of the questions I like to ask on the podcast is what What's unique about you and I, I, I want you to tell us but uh, if I could tell you what I think is unique about you I think <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with 
um, you being in the industry on the other side and seeing, you know, things and learning the industry from the perspective of I work within the brand uh, versus being on the outside as an agency. I think that you had so much valuable insight from that specifically. And I loved your ability to be able to break down a contract. But tell us, you tell it, you could speak to that if you'd like, but also um, tell us like, just, you know, like what do you feel like is different about you versus other partnership managers who are in this space? Thank you. I definitely, I so appreciate that. And I would say that is a very unique uh, skill and thing that I have within my background to bring yes. to it. But I would truly say what I think makes me unique is that I really am so driven by values. Like it is beyond anything else. Like ultimately, Yes, I'm building a business and I need to earn money for myself and the business. But beyond that, um, everything I do is for the good of the creator. And agents, partner managers do get a bit of a bad reputation sometimes that they're kind of, you know, icky and they try to do it just for the money. That's not why I created this. Like I truly did it because I already build those connections with folks like yourself and I was like, I just want to show up for them and ensure that they are protected, that they are getting what they deserve, and I'm in their corner ultimately. So I would say that is what is unique about me is that if somebody wants to work with me, I'm in your corner at that point. You know, I am your partner manager and I'm there for you to protect you and to ensure you get what you deserve. And I want to break that like stereotype as a partner manager. I don't want people to think like, oh, he's just in it for the money. No, I'm in it to protect the creator and then ultimately get the bank as a result of that. Yeah, you know what? I will definitely agree with that, um, like 100%. And I feel like it's just a, a great part of who you are as a person. Um, so, I mean, hey, the work that you're doing out there is absolutely incredible. And P.S., Sean is also an educator, so he does have products as well. Um, if you feel like you're just starting to figure this whole partnership thing out, Sean, I'll let you speak a little bit to like the products that you have or your coaching or I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so definitely. I introduced a lot of this into it. Again, for the creators out there who are like, I don't need a partner manager, I just need the skills to do it. Um, so I actually put together at the end of last year, a digital product pack where it has uh, media kit templates, pitching templates, um, rate setting calculators. Uh, and again, one of the things that I love is it's got some training around legalities as well and kind of contracts, what to look out for. And so I put that together as just let me give people everything they need in order to do this themselves. Um, and then a coaching program. So I run it for five weeks. Uh, I work one-on-one -on -one with creators. And basically, like I say, my goal there is to take someone from, I'm so overwhelmed by brand partnerships. I don't have the confidence. I'm not brave enough to do this. To, I am so confident to go out to a brand, pitch them, tell them what I'm worth negotiate and then sign that contract um yeah. again i put this together just to like really be in the corner of the creator and ensure that they can do what they do so yes um, yes yes and yeah. we'll have all that information down below under this episode for sure but sean i want to take it back to video just for a minute and ask Please. you do you remember your first video can you tell us what that was like and the feelings that you felt when you were doing it <laughs> oh yes so my first video was an entrepreneur and I hope that I'm correct in this. I think it was basically me saying, I just got laid off from my job and this is what's next. You know, it was a very raw, very real video. It was so scary to film that, to record that and to put that online. But then the reactions that I got from it were just so incredible and so supportive that that then gave me that spark to be confident to just continually show up with this video content and honestly like very practically you've already mentioned it but the business that I've built is because I put myself out online in video and then the folks within my network would show up and say wow we just love the story that you're sharing we love the content that you're sharing how can we work together so 
it was raw, it was real, but truly it was so worth it because what's the worst that happens? Nobody sees it and then it disappears. <laughs> Exactly. I'm so thankful for you sharing that experience with us. You're so brave. Um, and I want to ask you to dream with me a little bit and share like what what does being brave on video look like for you now? And maybe what would it look like like in the future? Like what was what 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 would the bravest version of you on video uh, look like as you continue to grow your amazing business? Oh, I love that. Um, now it is going to look like a YouTube channel and my own podcast. And so I was so excited because I love to educate. I love to share. I've always just been afraid of this idea of long form content versus uh, Instagram or TikTok. So for now, it is going to be putting that out again, putting it out to the world and seeing what happens, not being afraid of that. Um, but in the like long term future, it is having a say and a voice within this industry, being able to show up online, on video, have an opinion about mm. um, brand partnerships, about creators and them getting what they deserve and having folks out there in the comments saying, yes, we totally agree and we think creators should get what they deserve. So long term, it's like being that kind of opinion and voice in the industry that I live in. I love that, Sean. Thank you for sharing your uh, future vision of yourself with us. I really, really appreciate that. Um, Thank you for asking. <laughs> of course. Hello. Uh, where can we find you in the online space? Yeah, definitely. So currently on Instagram, I am at the Partnership Expert. And um, that's definitely my channel to, again, be real, to show up in stories. Um, always open to incredible DM conversations. Uh, and then stay tuned because over the next couple of weeks, if you go to uh, the Partnership Expert on YouTube, you will see my first ever podcast or video. Um, yeah. So I look forward to sharing and kind of seeing what people think about it. I love that, Sean. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you so much. Um, and well, of course, I'll talk to you offline, but... <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Yes, thank you for talking to my audience. I'm so excited to share this and I know that they will get so much value from it. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you so much. This has been such an honor. I'm so happy to be here.